So good afternoon. I'm Teresa Wilson, the city manager, and I think I have just confirmed for sure with the makeup of this crowd that we absolutely know what excites our citizens and our visitors and our business folks. Um, it is the access to our beautiful rivers, recreation, fun, community pride, and it is time, y'all. Several of us have been saying that together, like now is the time, it's past time, um, and we're just thrilled to have all of you here with us today together. And that's what I think you'll hear the theme today as you see the stakeholders that we've gathered from our business community, members of the, the Midlands Business Leadership Group, that we're very thankful for your participation and uh, dedication and determination to get to a day like today, as well as, of course, our elected officials, um, university officials, all of the stakeholders, foundation members like the Boyd Foundation and others. Mayor Rickman, I know, because he's told me he is going to cover all the bases to make sure that we welcome and thank every single one of you because it is truly a team effort and we've got we've got the momentum y'all so we're going to keep this going so with that i welcome you and i welcome to the podium our mayor daniel j rickman good afternoon everybody i just just want you to take a minute and look behind us look at that beautiful drop backdrop that we have gateway to our community and for a long time it reminds me of you, you remember Ernest and Julio Gallo said I will sell no wine until it's time well it's time for us to sell some wine down here at the riverfront and actually truly enjoy this beautiful piece of property but we wouldn't be here if it wasn't a collaboration and collaboration has been the key to a lot of things happening in Columbia and you know for us to be our city council moving forward, our, our state house delegation, I mean, today we have Senator Daryl Jackson here, Senator Tamika Isaac Devine, Representative Seth Rose, uh, Representative Russell Ott, uh, Representative Micah Kasky, Senator, uh, where's Representative Rose is here? I know I saw him, there he is. We have um, both other senators and other representatives who aren't here yet but who have been part of the team representative johnson senator harpoolian uh senator setzler who couldn't be here today but hopefully he will who's who's been a great supporter our richland county uh, delegation under the chairmanship of Paul Livingston on the economic development and he was the former chair at the time when these the penny came through and they started working on these projects uh, representative Teresio representative Pugh I did not see but I thought was going to be here then obviously we want to thank the chairwoman Jessica Mackey she's not here and of course uh, it wouldn't all happen if if their administrator uh, Leonardo <laughs> Brown was not part of that decision. Obviously, at the end of the day, the catalyst, the true partner here, the Ginyard family with Charlie Thompson leading that. Charlie, thank you. Thank you for, for getting us here today. <laughs> Obviously, the Boyd Foundation, um, George, Mary Bond, Ford that are here today, thank you so much. Uh, for your continued support. The University of South Carolina, Dr. Amaritas and his staff, thank you. The Midlands Business Leadership Group, uh, I see Bill Boyd, I see John Lumpkin, James Bennett, uh, the chairwoman Lou Kennedy couldn't be here, she, unfortunately she had some guests from out of town at her business, but their entire board for continuing to push. The Riverrunt branding, y'all think about this, this is gonna be a key piece to 27 miles of trail when this is all done. 27 miles of trail. There is nowhere in the southeast that's going to have that. And then you add the wildlife, the lilies, the, uh, the otters, um, you know, Spanish moss, class two rapids. Think about that. There's not a lot of places you can go and enjoy this, and this is all going to be connected together. 
and we continue to improve. Uh, I want to thank uh, Representative Rutherford. I thought he was going to make it, so I was going to wait uh, to acknowledge him. But he also very instrument in helping us plan, make sure that all access happens. And hopefully with the Elmwood uh, Park piece connecting over the rail line in the future, uh, with his support, we can make that happen as well and really connect all parts of our community to this asset that we have, the three rivers coming together. It'd be unfair if we didn't acknowledge Dominion. Last time we were standing here, we were standing in the mud, celebrating the coffer dams and everything going away and having this, this piece, but them working with us closely, opening that access for those 200 acres, it wouldn't happen. That's how we get to the true river district. So as we, we continue to invest and we, we continue to work together, the collaboration is growing. West Columbia, Casey, Lexington County, Richland County, Town of Lexington, Chapin, Irmo, Saluda Shoals, everybody coming together to create something magical for the region, truly where we're invested together and to take advantage of that. And obviously the energy that's there, the vibe. Somebody said we got a river vibe. I think we just have a vibe where we truly believe in Columbia that we're the capital city and we're making things happen after years of pushing forward. Um, we work together, and I think that's the key. You can see it by the folks that are here. Um, I want to thank our city manager, Teresa Wilson, our, our city staff. Uh, where is it all? Our, raise your hands, because everybody's got a hand in this, from Parks and Recs to, to GSI to business development. You name it, every department has been involved in, in making this a dream come true. And I think after a long time, we're so excited to get phase one, move to phase two, and move to phase three. And seeing how those elements evolve and how we move this forward and open up not only the commercial side on, on UG Street, but this beautiful vista that will tie in to our Inna Vista, our, to our Vista, our downtown and the connectivity that will happen. It's gonna be magical. And I want you to just close your eyes for a minute and visualize that you can actually walk from Granby to the dam. And what you'll see in between and the opportunities to access the river where we've never accessed it, having the ability to maybe hang out in our hammock park or find a cool spot to picnic with your family or actually be able to raft more than two hours down the river. Ha have a whole day where you and your family can grasp this beautiful setting that we call home. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our assistant city manager. Clint Sheely to give us more details on the product. And Clint, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Mayor. Well, good afternoon. It is a, a great honor to be with you today. And we, we together are so excited to discuss this very important and transformational project along our beautiful Congaree River. Before discussing the project specifics, I, I want to personally thank Charlie Thompson for uh, working with us so well and um, being a good partner for us uh, thus far. I also want to thank the team at Hussey Gay Bell for their hard work in advancing the project concepts to where we are today. And I want to thank Dana Higgins and, and, and all of the city team that have worked on this. Just as the mayor said, it's been a, a team effort and particularly Assistant City Manager Missy Gentry for her tireless efforts to champion this project over the past several years. So today, we've executed an agreement with Ginyard Associates, allowing us to proceed with roadway infrastructure and development on what is largely Ginyard Associates' property. Charlie and his team have been working diligently on the concepts that we refer to as William Street Extension Phase 1, and have taken that design up to the 30% completion level. Tonight, our city council will consider an amendment to our agreement with Ginyard Associates to compensate them for the work that has already been performed to date. And in addition, we will entertain entering into a professional services contract with that same firm, Hussey Gay Bell, to complete the engineering design, take this phase one project to bid, and then provide construction phase services supporting that work. 
It's happening, people. That's progress. So, so phase one of this William Street extension projects is, is depicted on these two boards that didn't want to sit atop the easel because of the nice breeze coming across the river. But um, it includes about uh, 4,700 feet of new and improved roadway, bike lanes, sidewalks, electric car charging stations, bike share stations, and other related infrastructure. We're going to consider impacts to local traffic and address that as part of the design. There'll be new right turning lanes on UG at Divine and at Pendleton, as well as a future signal design at William Street and Blossom Street intersection. And Blossom Street and UG G Street will also be evaluated for single retiming as necessary. This work is being performed to improve access, safety, and connectivity in the area bordered by Gervais Street, UG Street, Blossom Street, and our beautiful Congaree River. The overall objectives are to facilitate future access to the river, spur economic development, and enhance outdoor recreational opportunities for our citizens and for visitors to our capital city. This project, phase one, is expected to go to bid in early 2025. So we're just not that far away from groundbreaking. And then it'll take anywhere from 12 to 18 months to complete that first phase, that phase one. Well, what we're describing as phase one is, is really only the tip of the iceberg. Um, there are other phases that are gonna improve connectivity throughout this property and increase our access to the river. There'll be a roadway loop closer to the river, a spur to reach under Blossom Street to facilitate connectivity with adjacent properties and eventually Granby Park. And these future phases include property that is in the floodway and the floodplain. So additional feasibility work, flood studies and design is needed before those particular phases can advance to construction. Um, the city's contract that council is considering tonight will include compensation for that complex work with Hussey Gay Bell that are needed to advance those projects along a parallel path with the design for phase one. So we're working as fast as we can, as hard as we can to get all these things done, all that complex permitting completed. Um, we think all together we're looking at a time frame of two and a half to three years to have the road infrastructure complete on this property. So that'll be a great a great time when we get back together and, uh, and cut the ribbon. The uh, all total, um, and thanks to the efforts of the multiple partners that, that the mayor and Ms. Wilson have, have mentioned, available funding to the tune of $20.6 million to complete this work. So thank you for letting me get into the details a little bit. Thank you for letting us work on this project together. Thank you. Thank you, Clint. And at this time, we will hear remarks. I don't know if all of you have agenda, but as outlined there, starting with our Mayor Pro Tem, Will Brennan, who represents District 3, where we are seated. And so I'll ask Mr. Brennan to come forward, followed by Senator Daryl Jackson, Representative Seth Rose, Richland County Council Economic Development Chairman Paul Livingston, our University of South Carolina President Michael Amaritas, and then George Bailey, uh, the Boyd Foundation President, and of course, Charlie Thompson with Ginyard Associates. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to take a special moment to welcome you to City Council District 3 here in the heart of our beautiful city. I couldn't be more proud to have this gym in my district. I know Councilwoman, County Councilwoman Allison Terracio take great pride in the riverfronts here. And uh, oh boy, do we hear about it. Yeah, Tyler's at large. He's, uh, he, he's, he, he comes around. So. We appreciate your support and future votes for riverfront development. Um, if you do a little history digging, which I did on Wikipedia a little earlier, you, you see that our city was established as the state capital on March 22nd, 1786. That's 238 years ago. Then I also sharpened the pencils, worked backwards math. That's 83,020 days. But today is the day we've been waiting for. Today's a historic day for our city. This historic announcement is the first of many exciting groundbreakings, ribbon cuttings, and memories that will shine bright for current, current 
and future residents of our great state, our great county, and our great city. As the chairman of the Central Midlands Council of Governments and the City District 3 representative, I know historic days like this would not be possible without shared common energy and vision of our local governments, our state leaders, our business leaders, and our many residents, all who worked to provide us the best quality of life. Great transformative projects don't come around every day. Without our great general, our great Richland County Council and their belief that our riverfronts are a game changer for our region, we would not be here today. Remember this, the transportation penny tax was the core to start this great infrastructure project. The transportation penny tax is wildly successful at growing our transportation infrastructure. And the continued transportation penny tax will continue to benefit our county and our cities. Remember that at the ballot box in November. Our leadership at the State House, man, we couldn't have done it without y'all. The State House continues to be champions for us with their focus. The state funding for the Columbia Gateway Project would not have happened. We thank you, and please keep us in mind when future earmarks come up. <laughs> and to all the future partners, current partners, the Midlands Biz, thank you so much. The Boyd Foundation, excited to see what treasures we create together. And then I, I gotta give a special thank you to the Ginyard family, Mr. Charlie Thompson, and your vision, your trust, your belief. It only took 83,020 days for us to get here, but we're here and we appreciate it. I'm so glad to be here in this capital city on the 83rd, 1020th day. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is indeed an honor to be here and congratulations uh, to everyone involved. What a beautiful, beautiful sight. Uh, to those who've already been recognized, my colleagues in the General Assembly, County Council people, City Council members, to our mayor and to our wonderful first class city manager, Teresa Wilson, amen. <laughs> Listen, uh, my wife and I were in Savannah this weekend uh, and we toured the brand new JW Marriott. If you haven't been there and seen that, it is phenomenal. Walking through that, 14 new restaurants, my wife says, why can't we do something on the river in Columbia? And I said, I'm glad that you asked that. <laughs> Knowing that this was on my schedule. Let me say that we are happy to have been involved out of that. And I want to pat the General Assembly on the back just a little bit to make and Russell and Seth. Out of that 20 million, 16 million came from state earmarks. 16 million came from state earmarks. So it's important that when people criticize earmarks, nobody likes earmarks unless they come to your town, okay? <laughs> then everybody likes earmarks. Well, this is what it is all about. It is to do things like this, and we say a very special thank you to the General Assembly. Finally, I will tell you a little funny story. When this project first came on my radar, honestly, I had no idea what William Street Extension was. <laughs> All I knew is that I had been told that we're trying to get $16 million. And the late, bless his heart, Senator John Scott and I said, no, no, it will not happen unless we get a thorough explanation. And in fact, John Scott said it was dead on arrival. If you know anything about Nicky Sessler, you know it doesn't take much for him to get nervous, okay? And he doesn't share anything. He just goes, trust me, it's good. I said, Nicky, we need more than it is good. And as they always do when Daryl Jackson is on the edge, they call James Bennett and Teresa Wilson. <laughs> James Bennett called me and said, Senator, trust me, this is good. And I says, I kind of trust you. Teresa calls and says, trust me, it is good. I say, I really trust you, okay? <laughs> and as a result, we are so happy that we are able to do it. To my House members that are here, thank you so much. Uh, it is a great example of bipartisanship working together to do what is best for South Carolina. And I believe the best is yet to come. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, 
Hello everyone, I'm Seth Rose. And you know, as I sit here and I look out and I hear about this project and I look around Columbia, there are a lot of great things happening in the capital city. We've got Scout on the way, thousands of job, jobs on the way. And I've, I've told people with all the road projects, projects like this, if Columbia was a stock, you'd want to buy now. And someone jokingly said, well, how do you buy stock in Columbia? I said, you buy property. And I'm taking my own advice, I can tell you. But we, as has been said, is this was a collaborative effort between local and state government. I see my colleagues here. And, and I remember when I went to my freshman orientation in the legislature a couple years ago, and they said, anything you do at the state house, and they jokingly said, even if you want to burn the place down, you have to have help. And so when you hear $16 million in a state budget over the last two budget cycles, that was the product of help and bipartisanship. And with that, we can accomplish a lot. And so I want to say thank you to the General Assembly and my colleagues that are present here today. And I tell people, ever since I can remember, and, the, and we've all heard it, why doesn't Columbia utilize our ri river? We heard the senator talk about being in Savannah, and you go to all these different places, and they're utilizing the riverfront. Y'all, we are here after all this time, and that's what this project represents. That's what we're doing here today, is we are going to put the infrastructure in the ground for responsible development and utilize our riverfront, finally, after how many thousands of days? <laughs> Councilman Brennan, there you go. I didn't know that. I thought he was going to break it down into minutes and seconds for us, but he did it. Dustin Sherman came through all that. That's it. All right. But with that, and, and I have to say this, too, as I sit here and I look out, I remember when I first became aware that this was a movement moving forward and there was the, the movement to get a lot of funding from the, the, the state legislature. It was from Bill Boyd and John Lumpkin who are present here today. They came to my office. We met with Daniel Bone, who is chief of staff of Ways and Means. And we, we talked to other colleagues in the General Assembly. And here we are all this time later and we're, we're finally making it happen. So I'm, I'm very proud to be here today and to play a, a minor role in making this happen. And I can't wait to see what's to come. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And what a great afternoon. You know, um, uh, to my colleagues, friends, and special guests, you cannot believe how honored I am uh, to be with you all today, this afternoon. It means so much to me and what's happening in our Inter-Vista um, project here. On behalf of my colleagues, in particular, Mr. Rachel, who is here and who represents District 5 that we're in now. Mr. Rachel, thank you for what you do for District 5, supporting this, this particular project that you said that you did. Uh, now, you know, back in 2012, this County residents, residents saw a need to improve transportation in our county, throughout our county. And we voted to adopt a transportation penny. Now, I want to thank my colleagues at that time for their vision. And a couple of them are here now, um, Damon Jeter and Seth Rose. Thanks for that vision at that particular time. But now, you know, moving on to December 22, many of my new colleagues, including Mr. Racio, John, me, and others, and our business leaders, to celebrate the completion of phase two of the Inter Project with the grand opening of the Green Street Bridge, which led to where we are now, which is our third phase of this particular project. You know, I'm, ex I'm so excited that Transportation Innovation Project um, has continued to, to do what it does for Richland County and the city of Columbia. And, and it mainly does it because of the partnerships and the collaborations that we have that really, really excites me. Um, and when I say partnerships, I'm talking about uh, the city of Columbia. I'm talking about, um, uh, you know, Richland County. I'm talking about the state of South Carolina. Mills Business Group, and I can go on and on and on, but it is those partnerships that made this a success. And let's give a hand to all the partnerships, because I think that's crucial. <laughs> now, you know, access to the river always been a big deal for me. Um, you know, on a, on a personal note, um, you know, as a young child, um, I actually grew up in the Vista. You know, I was, you know, uh, went to an elementary school at the corner of um, Blanding and William Street, which was called Howard Elementary School. Now, I want you to know at that particular time, um, you know, 
We had access to the river, and we had, and we had economic development. But now let me tell you what that looked like. That was our number one statewide institution for maximum security individuals. We had a lot of it. Now, our access to the river that we had was whatever pathway we can blaze, whatever train track we can cross, and on and on. But, but think about where we are now. You know, you know, I'm, I'm going to enjoy this more than all of y'all. Now, the benefits of this project have extend far beyond transportation. It, it, it paves the way for many things in our community in terms of private investment, revenues for property taxes, um, opportunities for recreation, and I can go on and on and on and on and on. Um, it's clear to me that when we invest in our county, we have found that businesses and companies do the same. I'm truly excited to see the entire investor project come to, come to fruition, which upon completion will continue to drive economic development and yield more enhanced recreation opportunities and public access to our river. My colleagues don't plan to stop here. We're going to continue to work with the Board Foundation, Ginyard, all those parties that may have played a major role in make, making sure all of this happens. So again, on behalf of Richmond County Council and all my colleagues, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't be more excited about what's going on with us today. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. You know, I'm very proud every time that I'm in an event like this to see so many Gamecocks in the audience and here sitting on the podium. And it reminds me the impact that this university has on the civic and the political life of our state. I'm very excited today to see the vision for Columbia coming to life in my time as the president of the University of South Carolina. You know, for two decades, under Andrew Sorensen and Harris Pastidis, uh, the university strongly advocated for and believed that the Congaree was a great asset for the city and for the university, since both of us tried to attract more people and more businesses to Colombia. This project would revitalize a very promising area of the downtown that has been waiting on the sidelines, as other sections have seen upgrades and have seen growth. We're responsible for it as well, the university is. It took us 20 years to complete the plans from assembly to UG in our own campus. But let's not wait for another 20 years. <laughs> we, are, we are confident that the development of this new area, neighboring Green, William Street and the river, will convert what has been a brownfield into one of the most exciting, attractive, and desirable places in the city, a place where people in the community and our students and our graduates can live, work, play, and learn. UC is happy to lead and participate in every way that we can, Mr. Mayor, uh, to make sure that we bring this vision to reality. And let's do it soon, because I want still to be the president <laughs> when we have the park down there. Thank you. What a great day for us. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll keep my comments very brief, because I know it's starting to get a little warm. And thank goodness we have this tent. But I will say that the Boyd Foundation is very excited to collaborate with the Ginyard family, the City of Columbia, the University of South Carolina, Richland County, and the State of South Carolina to make this dream a reality. Well, when you're 10th in line speaking on the same topic, <laughs> There's a high probability I can't come up with anything that hasn't been already been said. I just have to find a different way of saying it. I also need glasses. I'll start 
by also expressing appreciation to all the speakers here today and um, also George, thank you, Lloyd Foundation, uh, particularly the mayor uh, for his leadership and dedication to this project from the very beginning. Uh, can't say enough about city staff, uh, city uh, assistant city managers, uh, Missy Gentry in particular and Clint Cheely, uh, city engineer Dana Higgins and planning administrator Lucinda Statler and all of the city staff that have been so helpful in bringing this to fruition. For my part, the journey began over 30 years ago in an effort to plan, uh, in an effort to advance prior planning exercises that contemplated this roadway infrastructure as a way to open up a 70 acre riverfront landmass for public access and development. 30 years is certainly a long time, but being a member of the Ginyard family, I come by it naturally as progress is often measured generationally. Uh, so much so that I've learned to adopt a, an expression that I'll have to attribute to Bill Boyd, who's here with us today, that our prospective projects often end with the words, in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> but we shouldn't associate the entirety of such lengthy passage of time to modern day dysfunction, because the story of William Street actually begins roughly 230 years ago. You see, the Ginyards also have a propensity for recycling names, and the first John Gabriel Ginyard happened to be the Surveyor General of the State of South Carolina in 1795, when the General Assembly decided to move the capital from Charleston to a more centralized location. So they sent Monsieur Ginyard up the Congaree River to find such a spot and draw up a town plan. It was decided that this location, known as Taylor's Hill or Taylor's Plain, at the confluence of these three great rivers, um, was to be such a location. Um, so it is where we're gathered today, and uh, it was the site of a most suitable and tidy two square mile grid of streets uh, that Mr. Ginyard drew up and laid out upon the land. Interestingly enough, that plan includes the section of William Street that we will soon begin to construct with a shared sense of purpose and commonality of interest. To be sure, the idea is not entirely new. It's just taken nearly 230 years to build, and that's a really long time. But it's important to bear in mind that this project is not just about constructing any ordinary street, as it is also a park feature that will include generous sidewalks, landscapes, landscaping, bike lanes, all to be interconnected to a larger riverfront park initiative that will play out in subsequent phases, fulfilling the vision and dreams of many at long last, hopefully in my lifetime. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charlie, and to all of our speakers. Um, for members of the press, it is not often, because as a manager, I'm very much so about protocol and process, but I do have four members of council here today, and it is not often that we have a presser prior to actions being taken, but I think this monumental event and these actions they will take tonight deserve the attention um, that they are truly being given. And I think that you've heard from all these speakers, so it's quite intentional that we wanted to put press around um, these decisions that will occur this evening. And we certainly invite all of you to join us at four o'clock at Busby Street as well. Um, but that's when truly the marching orders are given. And so many thanks have been given already to city staff, but I always thank my A team and every single one of the assistant city managers that are here will touch this project um, for many weeks and months and days and years to come, but it's moving now, y'all. So, Pam, Henry, Clint, Missy, and Jeff, the money man. I know he's serious. Uh, we got work to do and we're ready. And we are excited and certainly want all of the stakeholders to know that we can, will continue to be at the table with you to get this done. Thank you to our entertainment district partners that I see here, Main Street District, Vista, um, and of course our walk, bike, plan folks. I know that's where those questions were coming, so thank you all. Mr. Mayor. What you heard today is the capital city capital city of South Carolina and what we're seeing here we are you know three major highways three rivers 60,000 college students six universities and colleges of higher learning 
within a thousand square miles, 75% of the population, and soon to come a land of opportunity on 63 acres. So thank you for being here. Thank you.